best way to show you um, how apply templates works is to demonstrate it in the debug mode of um, of, um, of a transform. So here I am in oxygen. Here's an XSL. It happens to be the XSL that I use to build the samples for the indexes topics. And you can see as we look through here, we have our um, our template that matches forward slash. We put in the HTML head tags. We put in an HTML body tag. We put in a horizontal rule. We put in an H1 that says sample sections, another horizontal rule. And then we say apply templates, select whack whack section. What that's going to do is it's going to apply the, it's going to um, do the apply templates command against every section that's in the instance. To quickly review and have you understand um, what I mean when I say the sections in the instance, you can see that in this instance we have these four sections. So section S1, S2, S3, and S4. When I say whack whack section, it's going to find all of these and it's going to do that apply templates thing. Now, what is the apply templates thing again? The apply templates thing is go to the tag and start a branch wise traverse. That means go through all of the children and the children's children all the way down through each one of these children looking for templates that match. Looking for templates, for example, when I'm on this when I'm on this tag, when this is the, the, the node that I'm on, that match a title element. When I'm over here, look for ones that match a body element. When I'm over here, look for ones that match a P element. When I'm down in here, look for ones that match a keyword element. When I'm over here, look for ones that match an index anchor element. When I'm over here, look for ones that match an I element. So apply templates is going to go to the section. It's going to go down through each of the nodes looking for templates. And if it finds a template, it's going to run that template and it won't continue down into the, um, into the child nodes after you've trapped it in a template. But it will go back up and go to the next peer node. Okay, so that's a mouthful of words and it's way, way easier than for me to explain it to you just to watch it happen. And so I'm going to go over here to the tools menu. Uh, no, where is that again? Um, uh, I'm going to go over here to the XSLT debugger. And since I have everything set up, I'm going to clear this one. Okay, since I already had my instance and my transform hooked to each other, simply by going into the debugger set me up in the way that, um, uh, let's see, whoops, we're in the wrong place here, there. Um, in the way that you would expect, I have instance over here, transform over here, and output over here. And right now the output is blank because I don't have any output yet. Um, and so this is going to apply the instance, excuse me, it's going to apply the schema to the instance and allow us to see that happen one line at a time. So it's a very useful tool for us. And I'm going to use this little guy right here to say step into. And when I start it out, it goes to the very first, um, goes to the very first command. And now I go to the next one. And now see things are happening in two different windows. If you remember my explanation of how the template processor works, it's keeping track of two different files at the same time. It's maintaining a current node inside of the XML, the instance file. Um, and huh, it's, uh, it's actually looking at the wrong, sorry, it's looking at the wrong instance. Let me fix that. I don't want, uh, stop here. I don't want course book XML. I want sample indexes XML as the index. Okay, so let's try that again. I was running it against the wrong instance. Okay, so now we are back to where we were. Um, the, the current node right now is that forward slash node. I haven't run this command yet. I'm still before the root node of the instance. And here I'm going to catch it. And I'm going to find a transform. And I'm, I'm looking for transforms at every current node. And now I found one. I found one that matches the forward slash. So the next time I step in, now I'm going to now step into that backslash, uh, forward slash, sorry. And my current node is still set to before this one, before the, the root node. Okay, so one more step, and I read that HTML command. One more step, and now that I've got a child of that HTML command, I start to build my output one line at a time. Next line of the output is the head with all the stuff that went in the head. Next line of the output is going to begin the body, and as soon as I put something in the body, the body will show up in the output. It's kind of cool to watch this happen because you can you can look at your, tran your your transforms 
one line at a time and watch exactly what happens and we're soon going to start the fun. So here's sample sections, I put that in, here's another horizontal rule, now I'm on the apply templates and it's apply templates select whack whack section. So the first thing, so what we're going to do over here is we're going to build a list of all the sections and we're going to go through them one at a time, starting with the first section. Can you see that? I, I, the current node now became the first section. Next time through the loop, this section will be the current node. Next time, the section after that. And the, the template processor found a template that matches section. Here it is. This template matches section. And what it does is it puts in a an A tag with the ID of the section. That's an anchor so that we can jump to that section. And let's do that command. So I, I found a template that matched the section. And now it's going to do what that template says. It's going to put, make an H2 and put the value of the, the title in there. And that's it. We're done with that template. And now we move into the next template. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the last command, sorry about that. The last command here was apply templates, select body. And since there was no template that, that matched body, I don't have a body template in here. There was a template that matched body. The template processor began marching into the body. It hit a P and it said, oh, I do have one that matches a P. And let's do that one. The matching P1 says, uh, the matching P1 says put in a P tag, and now don't do anything except apply templates. Oh, what's going to happen here? We go to the P tag, and we're going to start looking at all its ch at all its children. And every time we hit a child, we're going to look for a template. Okay, so let's step into this first template. Notice the first child is a keyword. We'll do what the keyword template says, which says put in this span put in the value of the keyword. We already put in the anchor for the keyword. And now we have a lot of, here's our stack right here. We have a lot of templates on the stack, right? Every time we do an apply templates, we're pushing another template onto the stack. And if you don't understand what the stack is, don't worry about it. But this does show you how deep we're in, right? We've done a lot of apply templates by now. We went through the section, we went through the body, we went through the P and now we're in the keyword and notice there's no more apply templates. So after this, we're going to start popping back up um, and we popped out of the keyword template and now we're on the next sibling of the keyword template. It automatically, by the way, went and found that text node and it ran the default template on the text node, which simply puts the value of it in, uh, in the output. Okay, so now we're going to run the index anchor um, and it'll do what the index anchor says to do. We found another index anchor. It'll do what that said to do. Um, we're now back out at the, um, uh, at, the, at the template that matched P. We finished applying all the templates internal to P. Now we're on the second P, and we'll do the same thing for the second P. The second P puts in the, it puts in the value of the text node. Uh, we found the keyword in there. It'll do the keyword. Um, now we've popped out of that second P, and now we're back up at the section. And now we're done with the section. I think we are. And now we're on the second section. See how we scroll down to the second section? Okay, I can continue on, but um, actually I'll, I'll leave this as an exercise to you. When you when you have a template that you want to see how it runs, go into the debug mode inside of Oxygen, run one step at a time as you've seen me doing, and you'll see your output build one step at a time as well. What did we see here? And let me close everything up um, so that we can review what we learned about apply templates in this little um, demo. So here's, uh, here's my first command that says apply templates. There it is right there. And what it says is for each section, go and try to find templates that match. If you don't find a template that matches, you'll do the default template, which does a value of and then goes down into the nodes of, that temp of, that, um, of the current node, goes down into the child nodes of the current node. Okay, so here are all the templates. Notice that we just have a stack of templates here waiting to run. They're not explicitly called. They're implicitly called by the apply templates. When we find a P, we'll run this one. When we find a bold, we'll run this one. When we find an italic, we'll run this one. Index anchor and keyword. And so by going down through the section, finding the templates, um, notice there's no template to match the title. Um, we, we called, we commanded that title in. No, I'm sorry. Here, we put the, we command the title in. We could have created a separate template for the title, but instead we decided to command the title in. 
and then we selected the body and did an apply templates on that. Okay, so I think that um, talking more about it is not going to be nearly as helpful as if you want to go deeper into the subject, you playing around and watching the flow of control.